Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Three Bands with the first edition of Pickups. I'm going to be sharing this super sick pair of shoes right here, and I can't wait to share a lot more stories. But it really inspired me because when I thought back to my past and I was looking at these Jeremy Scotts, which are just all up in your face, I was really, really thinking about honestly racism about being picked on about being bullied about people who are you know just shunned and outcast maybe because they're too big or maybe they don't want to wear what everybody else wears or maybe they're not comfortable with their you know your sexuality and they want to be a particular different sexuality or maybe they want to be identified a different way or maybe they have a speech impediment or maybe something with their you know physical body is a little bit not like the norm and because of that they get shunned and they get pushed aside and they get made to feel like they are less than who they are Man, that's terrible. So when I saw this pair of shoes and I said, Jeremy Scott, now that's a guy who is out there who isn't ashamed to go for what he wants and he'll just go bam in your face. So when I saw this crazy pair of shoes, right? These superstars with this crazy long tongue. And I already knew that I liked this shoe because it has the money on there. The money, we just finished up the series with Jacques Chassin, right? And the money for him, the hundred dollars. And the whole point of that was just saying that shoes at that point had become uh, a movement and they were status symbols. And this is the exact same thing. This is a representation of that. This long, elegated tongue that I like to say is a representation of maybe having too much money or it being maybe bad for you or being ugly or maybe it could be a good thing who knows what jeremy scott was thinking but at any rate when i saw these shoes i was like hey first i'm not going to buy a pair of shoes that i don't think i can wear and i was like you know what i can i could pull these off in a certain situation and i'm going to talk to you about that a little bit more but when i also looked at this shoe let me go ahead and grab them and get them out of the way these are some crazy shoes guys but i love them let me get that box out of here so here we go nice crazy pair of adidas superstars what i loved about this was there another pair of shoes in my archive that meant a lot to me and it had to do with all of those different topics it was a pair of shoes that when i saw them i had to buy when i learned a little bit more about the person a who was the shoe created with in collaboration so let me just go ahead and grab it and let's talk about this person who i think you know, honestly, he's somebody that I look up to. He's somebody that I admire. And I, I just can't say enough about this guy. This is going to be Keith Herring. And these are, these are the Addy Colors. Addy Color High BK2. This was in collaboration with Jeremy Scott. And I know you that you know that Jeremy Scott is, is, he is known for these crazy silhouettes. But this particular pair of shoes is a little bit more tame. This particular pair of shoes was in collaboration with the Keith Herring Foundation. Keith Herring, who is he? People who commit graffiti often share two things in common, anonymity and a lack of talent. But now Charles Osgood reports one subway artist is making a name for himself somewhere besides the police block. He stalks the New York City subways waiting for his chance to strike. When the opportunity comes, he moves fast. He has to. Opportunity for Keith Herring is a blank advertising poster. Using a piece of chalk, the young man from Kutztown, Pennsylvania draws a picture a cartoon-like drawing which he finishes in a minute or two and then moves on. He may do as many as 30 such drawings in a day, all different but all the same in certain ways. He puts them down here so that millions can see them, and millions do. It was made for lots of people. You don't have to know anything about art to appreciate it or to look at it. There aren't any um, hidden secrets or, or um, things that you're supposed to understand. He, well, he was a guy who grew up, he, well, he didn't grow up in New York, but he ended up selling in the East Village. As a lot of you may or may not know, the East Village was a just a huge cultural movement in the 80s. 80s because that was a hub of where there were so many famous people there and so many famous clubs that movies have been made about. Now, Keith Haring was an artist. He was a classically trained artist. Being classically trained to me is very, very important because it means you understand the dynamics of movement. You understand perspective. You understand color. And you're just not out there painting anything. And if you think there's not art learning from the basics and learning movement, then 
I don't think you've ever heard of this guy named Michael Jordan. From him playing his entire life and learning the movements and learning the basics and learning how to dribble and how to do a layup, he evolved into his own style and craft. And if you ever watch his movement when he plays, it absolutely is art. Keith Haring the same way with art. When he started out, he did traditional art, but he gravitated into these figures. And I'm gonna pop up so many pictures along the way so you can see, but his pictures were painted in the New York subways next to different advertisements and he would paint in chalk. Now these chalk outlines wouldn't be these crazy complicated figures. They would be these almost like hieroglyphs. And let me show you these shoes right now and kind of give you some, give you some perspective of this. Now what's crazy about this is all these hieroglyphs on here that you're seeing are going to be more geared towards children. Now Keith Hearing, while he was and he is very, very controversial. I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit. He had a big, big soft spot for children because children to him represented innocence. Children to him represented uh, non-discrimination about, you know, they loved what they love, they like what they like. And one of his most important are the most popular iconic pictures that he has is the radiant baby. And the symbols of the radiant baby of the lines coming out represent energy. And he was huge in the energy, the energy of life. And also with that, the energy of death. There was also an image of a dog. And the dog was representative of, now when you think about Keith Haring, what I loved about it when I did my reading, and I did hours and hours of endless reading, I couldn't get away from it. The dog was a representation of authoritative figure, was a representative of the animal, maybe the animal of government, maybe the animal of ignorance, maybe the animal of not wanting to change, maybe the animal of people judging you or bullying on you or whatever the case may be. So when you see that animal stick figure in there, it is a representation of that authoritative figure of people trying to empower you. And when you see the radiant baby, of course, that's going to be the innocent and youth. Now, what he did was he painted these crazy hieroglyphic pictures next to other advertisements. And when you look at them, for some reason, they evoke all these senses. And sometimes these senses were dark. So I appreciate his life. I appreciate what he did. I appreciate everything that he worked for. I'm honestly shocked that Adidas made this pair of shoes knowing how controversial Keith was. And I also want to say to Keith Haring who died of AIDS, HIV, and that was one of the driving forces in his life, all the uh, just negativity that came with that. And I can tell you personally from a family member who was not homosexual, who was heterosexual, who had that, people that didn't want to come next to her because they figured they might get that disease or that virus because there's something evil or wrong or maybe she's done something wrong in her life and she deserved it. That's absolutely ridiculous. So for people like Keith Herring, I say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And although this story is a story that maybe you may not agree with or maybe you do agree with it. The point is that we all have to start somewhere. We all have to believe in ourselves and we all have to grind, some of us more than others. And the funny thing about all this is it all comes to me from this pair of shoes. Now, before I get out of here, I want you to just kind of, I just want to share with you, you know, I got these crazy, 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 let me grab them. Shoes, you're like, you're like three bands. Okay, now you were pretty serious. Now let's get kind of lighthearted. How in the world would you ever pull this off? Well, first, although I do have this channel, I do talk to everybody a lot. I'm a very shy person, especially if I go out into a public crowd. You know, I'm not the guy that's going to walk up and just start a conversation. I'm the person who's going to sit to the side and I'm going to be kind of awkward talking. But I know that let's say I was going to a social situation and I definitely don't want to hang out with this group of people, but I do want to hang out with this group of people. I would wear this with a nice pair of black Adidas track pants, a clean white shirt, of course, an Adidas hat. And I wear these super dope kicks because I know what would happen as soon as I walked in that room, there would be people that would look at me and laugh and I'd be like, forget about it. There would also be people who would just not even come near me and shun because maybe they were too good for me. And I'd be like, you know, peace and deuces. But then there would be another group of people that would look at me and they would be curious and they would be intrigued and they wouldn't be looking at me like I was some strange guy with a defect or an alien. They would be looking like, I wonder what's up with this guy. Maybe I want to get to know about him because even though he's different, he's doing something different. You know, maybe that's my kind of person. So, that, so maybe now somebody will come up to me and they'll start a conversation and say, hey, cool shoes. And I say, man, these are the Jeremy Scott. You know who Jeremy Scott is? No? Let me tell you a little bit about him. You know anything about the forum? 
Yeah, well, you know, I do collect shoes, but this is really inspiring, and this is why I bought this pair of shoes. You familiar with Keith Haring? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Keith Haring. Well, dang, that's pretty dope, man. I know it is. Hey, by the way, you want to sit down and talk over here? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. That's my kind of person. That's what this is all about. And as always, I'm going to leave you with that just quick little story. Collect what you love. Never follow the hype crowd. Never try to fit in. Always be yourself and know that it's okay to be you in your own skin. This is Three Bands. Until the next dope pair of shoes, I'm out.